Hello, my name is Michael Bowman. I am a group product manager in Windows in an organization called Trusted Experience and Compliance, where our mission is to make Windows and the Windows ecosystem the most trusted platform for your business and life. Welcome to Ignite. Today, we are joined by Ben Olson, Responsible AI and Data Compliance Lead for Windows, who will walk us through how Windows is innovating responsibly on Copilot Plus PCs, and will provide tips on how you can do the same. Whether you're an enterprise building a line of business application, a developer looking for guidance on how to raise the bar when creating trustworthy experiences for your customer, or an informed consumer wanting to understand how Windows experiences are built on trust. Ben, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. We're going to be talking a lot about trust in this session. And before we get started, uh, can you tell us what that means for Windows and its relationship to innovation? Absolutely. Thanks, Michael. Innovation is all about finding new ways that technology can help us achieve more at work, at home, and as a society. Those new capabilities also bring about new challenges and new ways that technology can be misused. However, that doesn't have to be the case or a byproduct of innovation. And you and I are here to ensure that the AI and Copilot PC paradigm shift is responsible by design and responsible in the market. So customers, so you can trust the Windows platform and also the experiences that we build on that platform. That's really inspiring, Ben, and it really aligns with what we're hearing from our customers. Not only is AI exploding in the market, which is a surprise to no one, but responsible AI practices have been called out as a primary factor in purchasing decisions and long-term product sustainability. Innovating responsibly is critical to retaining the trust of our customers and the ecosystem. Ben, I often hear you say, with great innovation comes great responsibility. Can you talk a little bit about how Windows builds features responsibly and the AI principles we follow here at Microsoft? So at Microsoft, we have six abiding principles and those are fairness, reliability and safety, privacy and security, inclusiveness, transparency, and accountability. These are characteristics of AI systems. They're also capabilities and their commitments regarding their behavior, whether they're on a device or powered by the cloud. So first, fairness is about AI systems treating all people fairly wherever AI is used. Reliability and safety is about the systems we build performing in a reliable and safe way and that it keeps them safe in, in critical tasks or situations they're in. Privacy and security is all about respecting people's privacy and making sure that the system is secure to use. Inclusiveness means that AI should empower everyone yeah. and engage people across differences. Transparency helps customers, regulators, and even ourselves understand these systems. Mm -hmm. And lastly, and not, not least, accountability is about the reality that people should be responsible and accountable for AI systems and not re simply release innovation for innovation's sake, but because it's good for us, it's good for the customers, it's good and responsible for those we serve. So we'll be talking about how these principles show up in our features, in our models, and uh, ways that you can use and leverage these principles in your own work. Uh, and you know, when you build responsible AI, into your generative AI applications in the enterprise or, or as a developer. I love that. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. And I am, I am so thrilled about the Copilot Plus PC. Uh, and we all, have two of them. Yeah, we have two of them sitting here and all the new exciting features uh, that are now available in Windows. Can you walk us through a couple of those um, and show us how responsible AI principles are put into practice? Yeah, yeah. So first we'll talk about recall and then generative fill. So let's, let's dive into our demo. Great. So as recall, we just talked about transparency, privacy, and security as those, as those principles that we follow, and we'll discuss how those weave their way into the feature. So what is recall to begin with? Recall is an entirely new way to instantly find something you've previously seen on your PC. Your recall is always opt-in. A system tray icon will indicate when snapshots are being saved with preview capability for visibility to you. When recall is off, the icon disappears. Secondly, snapshots are only accessible by you. To access recall content, you must use Windows Hello and enroll in biometric authentication, face or fingerprint. Most importantly, your snapshots never leave your device. So the snapshots stay local to the device and are protected with industry-leading encryption and stored in a secure enclave. It's a protected area in a computer's memory that securely stores and processes 
sensitive information and prevents unauthorized access. So let's try it out. Joanna is a PM at Contoso, trying to find the presentation she compiled. It had crucial updates about the project's timeline, but she can't seem to remember the name. She can open recall from the lower right-hand corner and type in her search query. Isn't that cool? Well, I used it the other day too to find a document that I lost, so yeah. it's, it's useful in all sorts of situations. So let's circle back to how we developed it responsibly. Recall requests consent during Windows setup with transparent messaging about snapshot collection. You can choose to enable or disable the feature at any time in Windows settings. Just go to Privacy and Security and click on Recall and Snapshots. You can also find the sensitive information setting there. Recall can apply a filter over sensitive information, ensuring highly confidential data like passwords and credit cards remain confidential. It's on by default to protect your credentials. Another crucial feature that can be found here is the ability to delete snapshots. This ensures that you are always in control of your data with the flexibility to remove any snapshots you no longer need or want to keep. To delete specific snapshots based on content rather than time, you can use Recall directly. Imagine you accidentally took a snapshot of confidential code. You wouldn't want that information stored. You can quickly locate and delete the snapshots to maintain your data privacy. Recall also allows users to filter apps and websites from which snapshots are taken. For instance, if you want to exclude your IDE, like Visual Studio, you can easily do so to prevent those snapshots from being stored. Setting your preferences to exclude Visual Studio or exclude other specific sources ensures that only the most relevant and necessary information is captured, which enhances privacy and usability. So you can see how there's many different ways in which those principles, transparency, privacy, and security find their way into the product. And perhaps some of these patterns can be an inspiration for those building ap enterprise applications or, or developers here with us. So I um, hope that helps. Yeah, amazing, yeah. Ben. And uh, what a great example of how Recall is safe, secure, and transparent. Another feature that I'm really excited about is uh, generative fill. Um, and I'm wondering, could you talk a little bit about that feature and maybe the AI principles of fairness and security? Yeah, yeah definitely. Let's do it. So generative fill is, in its name, indicates that it does something with generative AI. And so in this case, ge there's generative fill and there's generative erase. Handily, the, the verbs there indicate the behavior. So uh, let me show you, you, know, you know, imagine you're a creative director. So a designer sends you a graphic, but the client came back and noted some unwanted elements. With generative erase, you can simply select the area within these elements, and with the click of a button, they're gone. So that's how it works. It erases stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, and with generative fill, it fills in things. So it's a, it's a fantastic um, corollary or, or partner you know, to that erase feature. So, Let's say you're an interior designer working with a client in real time. You see here an image of a room. Maybe there's something missing. A plant? A plant? It could be missing a plant. So let's, let's fill in a plant. <laughs> uh, so I just highlight this area and I type in, let's say, house plant. And AI fills in the space with an object that matches the style and lighting of the existing image with that, that prompt. So it's, uh, it's kind of like magic. So generative fill and generative erase have a lot of potential uses from enhancing personal photos to efficiently handling customer scenarios at work. And the best part is it's free with painted photos there. It's no need for a separate subscription. And image processing, and this is back to our principles, image processing happens locally. Users can be assured that their image content remains private and secure. Additionally, you know, this, is, this is maybe one of the areas that we'll spend a little bit more time on later is around content moderation, which involves content filtering to make sure that the output of that generative AI system is fair by design. And so that's an, yet another way that we, we weave these principles into the features themselves. And you can do the same. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Thank you, Ben. It is clear how Copilot Plus PC could accelerate productivity and creativity for end users and enterprises. But what about developers? We know that a large part of the Windows value prop 
comes from the energy and innovation of the ecosystem. How does the Copilot Plus PC and Windows help developers build more trustworthy apps? It's a great question. So enterprises and developers are also able to leverage our on-device capabilities for mm -hmm. their own applications through the models available in the Windows app SDK. That's fantastic. It sounds like this is a great way for developers to capitalize on the benefits of local models, uh, such as decreased latency and increased privacy and security. What kind of models will be available for use? Yeah, so in this release, we will be shipping API access for several models, including optical character recognition, image segmentation, and PhySilica. Those are all great capabilities that developers can leverage to power their Windows apps. Yes, yeah. And then for any reason, you, if you don't want an app to leverage the generative on-device model, we provide capabilities to limit app access to models, just like how you're able to restrict apps from using your location. You can find the toggles to turn off model capabilities in the privacy and security page under Windows Intelligence. Nice, uh, that's easy to find. I remember this was announced at Build uh, last May. Has there been any updates to the model? Yes, there has. So in this update, we'll provide support for more languages and introduce a built-in content moderation system running locally on your device. Actually, that brings up another great point. System safety for PhySilica. What kinds of RAI assurances are we providing developers who plan to integrate with PhySilica and users who will interact with apps using PhySilica. Yeah, yeah. So just like we talked about with our features, we're integrating responsibility into the model layer here. So the Phi model itself has undergone rigorous training and testing to help ensure it responds to users' prompts in a safe way. And this was done in an iterative approach by testing for harms or potential harms and curating and retraining the model with data to address identified weak points. So in addition, as mentioned earlier, this update will also include a built-in local content moderation system, which will further ensure responses are appropriate. This content moderation system is based on the same model that powers Azure's content safety moderation service, but it's optimized locally hmm. you know, to, to run on the device, meaning that data stays on that device for that purpose, yeah. Really nice, really nice. So is there any lift for developers to integrate with this content moderation system? No, so the content moderation layer is baked in, and so it's attached to both model inputs and outputs, and it's handled within the API call, so developers can get the benefit of content moderation by default with PhySilica. We acknowledge that no content safety system is perfect, right? And we encourage developers to employ additional content moderation methods and capabilities. So Ben, can you share more about content moderation and things that developers and enterprises may care about? Yes. So model training and content moderation is really one piece of the safety story. So content safety encompasses the entire AI product lifecycle from the very per first piece of data you collect to train the model to what you deploy for the end user. And there are mitigations throughout that process and lifecycle that we use in our features and suggest that developers do as well. Okay, so developers integrating with PhySilica can anticipate that the model has been trained with safety in mind and that all calls to PhySilica will come with some base level of content moderation. Beyond that, what are your suggestions for developers? Yeah, that's a great question. So there are many things you can do on top of what's provided with PhySilica as that base layer. Things like providing transparency in your communications to your customers about what's happening in an experience. There's also additional filtering you may want to apply with meta prompting and uh, you know, content filters can be applied with cloud services, for example. So you can use uh, Azure Content Safety or some other third, third party service, depending on what you'd like to do uh, to just like ratchet up that, that uh, safety aspect, depending on the, the circumstance. And uh, you know, I, I think something we'd also recommend is really listening to your customers after you've launched a feature or experience based on something like this. So, uh, you, you, you're ne you can never get it perfect the first time, but you're always trying to create a system where you can refine that AI system over time and make sure that it's responsible and just ever more responsible as you, as you iterate through that life cycle. Oh, it, you know, it is really inspiring to see how Windows is the most open platform for developing trusted AI experiences. Ben, we've talked a lot about how Windows is developing responsibly and the opportunities for developers and enterprises to do the same. As you mentioned, trusted development is a continuous practice. So where can people go to learn more if they want to get involved 
or help shape what trusted development looks like in the future. Definitely, Michael. So first, we'd love you to go to this uh, QR code here and find your way to uh, stay connected, really. So I think we, there's more to come. We'd love to co-innovate together. And so you can provide some thoughts or information and, and contact info, and we'll, we'll go from there. So last thing I'll say is, may you build responsibly. Yeah, thank you, Ben, and thank you for joining us today.